jobs and inflation dual mandate for the Fed. Yep. You believe that PCE report on Friday, you said it was perfect. You don't hear yes. people call inflation reports perfect very often. <laughs> uh, what was your take on the JOLTS report? What are you expecting from the jobs report coming up? What does this all mean? Sure, let's go back. First of all, thanks for having me on your show. First of all, the PCE report was perfect in the sense that inflation is not as bad as was early, fear, early in the year. So it says to the Fed, we don't need to do anything. In other words, we don't need to raise rates. So now the question is, when will the Fed cut rates? And that's the second part of the report. The second part of the report showed growth was slowing down. You look at consumer spending was down, real spending was negative. You add the fact that first quarter GDP revisions were being revised lower, stagnant manufacturing, take all this together. This says that the Fed has a growth story that they're worried about. And then you get the JOLTS report as you talked about yesterday. Quit rates are coming down. You see um, the number of, number of jobs available divided by the number of people looking for jobs. That's falling. That was a 2.0, now it's at 121. Jobless claims are increasing. So but, think, but does it all go out the window if the jobs report coming up on Friday is hotter than expected? Does I, all this go out the window in your mind? I think it's going to be lower than expected. I think all that together suggests that the, the labor market is slowing down pretty fast, pretty quickly. And I think we could okay. see 4% for the first time in 27 months. All right. So you believe we might see a pullback, but you call it healthy. At the yes. same time, you're saying you're all in on fixed income. Why would you be all in on fixed income if we're going to see a healthy pullback mm -hmm. and you believe the markets are strong? Aren't you worried about missing out on some of the opportunity? I think long term, I think this year we're still positive with the market. I think near term, we could see a correction like we saw in October of last year, a short, quick correction. Corrections happen every eight, yeah. to, eight to nine months. I think it's a great opportunity. But then why lock in on fixed income? Because lock, because fixed income, I think, you know, when we have money moving away from equities into fixed income, take advantage. Think about this. Ten-year Treasury yield is about 2.05% real yield. Normally, it's around 89 basis points. There's some attractive opportunities within fixed income. We also like value. We also like small cap. We also like other areas of the market that yeah. should advantage. You also like health care. So, Straight me out on this one. Conventional yes. wisdom is if you're expecting Fed rate cuts, you want to be in on cyclicals. Healthcare is not cyclical. It's actually, oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, it's good. And I think that's a great point. But I think healthcare is a great defensive growth sector. You know, we like that as a complement to, say, industrials, also to financials. One area that's looking extremely attractive right now, utilities. We're starting to get all into utilities at this right. point in time. Techno technology, is a little, we're a little worried about technology. You see budget cuts, you see, um, you see input costs are rising. You saw last week software stocks beat earnings expectations and AI stocks beat expectations, but they also revised lower forward guidance. We're worried about that.